Kelsey's going to a bachelorette party this weekend, and she said, you know what, I think you need to get out of Dodge. You work too much, and you haven't had any days off since the lawn care season started. And I said, yeah, I know, but I probably have some stuff to do. She said, no, I think you need to do something and get away. I'm gonna take my car, which I never drive. This is going to be the second time I've driven it this season, which probably shows you I do need to go do something. I'm gonna go on a little road trip. You can't go on a road trip with a dirty car, right? Or maybe that's just me. Out on the open road, I made my way out of Des Moines and into the wide open spaces of rural Iowa. The Plum Crazy Challenger may not be the fastest car in the world, but man, it's a nice cruiser. Big and heavy like the muscle cars of days gone by. There are definitely parts of the state that live up to the nothing but corn stereotype, but that's okay too. It has its own kind of beauty. In a quarter mile, sharp left onto Iowa 187 North Washburn Avenue. It only takes a few hours to leave the corn for the trees in the Mississippi River. I was visiting what is known as the Driftless Area. It encompasses part of Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois. And it's named the Driftless Area because it lacks glacial drift. While most of the rest of the plains were flattened out by the glaciers, this area was missed, and it caused the terrain to be very steep and rugged compared to the rest of the Midwest. It reminds me a lot more of Tennessee or West Virginia than the millions of acres of crop fields surrounding this region. I stopped to check into my hotel. Then it was back across the river to the Iowa side to the town of Marquette. Built into the bluffs, it's a foreign site to most of what we're used to in the flat part of the Midwest states. From there, it's just a quick jaunt down the road to McGregor, Iowa. This is a unique small town with a lot of character to it. I love to see old Main Street areas like this that are still alive and working hard to maintain their history. When I head out to a new place, you'll very likely find me at a local brewery trying some local beer. It was a cloudy morning the next day when I woke up for more road trip fun. My body was already quite aware of the humidity in the air, but the camera confirmed that for me as I walked outside. I had a quick drive plan for the first stop. To start off this part of the day, I'm actually on a portion of the Great River Road. It's a scenic route that starts in Lake Itasca, where the Mississippi River begins in northern Minnesota, and follows the river all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. I made a stop at Lock and Dam number nine on the Mississippi. Kelsey and I have been to the Sioux Locks in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, but I think this might be the first time seeing one of these on the Mississippi River. This helps boats and barges to safely navigate as topography changes on the river as you go up and downstream. Today I was the only one there, but I was able to see the lock in operation for a recreational boat going through to the lower side of the river. Back on the Great River Road, I went a few more miles before turning onto County Road C. 
You never know what you're going to get with county roads, but from what I'm finding in Wisconsin, they're usually in pretty good shape. This road would take me through the heart of the Driftless. But before I do that, I decided to take a back road and head back to the river to give you a better view of the bluffs. And just like that, we come out of the trees and back to the fields. And then back into the trees and down the hill to the Mississippi River. Back on County Road C for good this time, I was winding my way through the valleys when I made it to one of the spots that I had marked on my map. Yep, that's exactly what it looks like. From the reading that I did, no one knows exactly how this bathtub showed up here at this natural spring. But the owners of this property used this as their only water source for many, many years. As one of the main family members even lived to 101, some say this water may lead to long life. So I would definitely consider that to be one of the most interesting things I've ever seen in terms of just randomly find this stuff out in the country. But uh, I don't really know how I even found it on a map. I think I just saw some picture that said bathtub in the middle of nowhere or something like that. I don't even know what it said. It's actually pretty cool. And the water, from what I saw, a bunch of people said you definitely need to try the water because it's ice cold and it's very tasty and they're correct. It was one of those stops that you just have to see to believe. Back on the road, there was a haze in the air from the near 100 degree heat index, and I stopped for a bite to eat and noticed I was missing a very special event. Just a few miles down the road, I stopped at an area overlooking the Wisconsin River. The next stop was of course another brewery, 
in Soldiers Grove, Wisconsin. I enjoyed a flight and then made my way to the edge of town before heading back down the winding roads through the trees. Later that evening, I picked up a few things that you just have to get in Wisconsin because they're only available there. And also a storm dumped a lot of rain on the area, something we desperately need back home in central Iowa. When I woke up the next morning, the fog was in the midst of the bluffs and rain followed me for part of my trip home. Believe it or not, this is probably the third time I've ever used my windshield wipers on this car. It rarely sees any kind of weather. In life, we all need a getaway from time to time, a chance to see something new and to explore the unknown. Never underestimate what you can find just a few hours from your home. <laughs>